right so um for this video we are going to actually um discuss uh, when they give you a few set of data or maybe a few data and then how are we going to use all this data to actually uh, estimate the original equation for the curve okay so um, generally you need to draw graph but if let's say they give you the data and ask you to estimate the original value for the curve the original equation for the curve okay so let's have a look for example 10. so for example 10 they are talking about the um, population in millions and also the year so they show you okay from year 1790 until 1860 what are what are the population that they have okay so you can see that the population is growing and usually for population growing right the 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 graph should be a curve all right okay so here they already, already tell you that um the original equation for population growing should be p equals to a b power t p is the population value and then the t should be the time and here they say t should be set zero until 70. okay so for information right when you are having all this data uh, like the value of t you cannot assume that t is 1790 because 1790 is the name of the year right so when you want to draw the graph you will assume that the zero should be the starting year which is this one 1790 so this is 10 this is 20 30 40 50 60 and 70 so this is the value of the t that like when you want to draw the graph okay these are the values that you should use Okay, then now the population value they already give you here. Okay, so how can we use all this type of data to sketch graph and after that to get the value for A and B? But because you don't know the A and B, so you need to find the A and B out. You can get the original equation. This is the original equation now. Okay. Alright, so um first before we start, what we need to do is that you need to convert the equation into the linear equation first. So that's the first thing. Okay. So you know that P is equals to A B power T. So why would we need to convert it into a linear equation? So that after we convert it, uh, we will know what is the variable that I need to draw on the Y axis and what's the variable that I need to draw on the X axis. Okay, so here I convert it into a linear equation. I need to take long for both sides. And after that, I expand everything until you cannot expand it okay so this is uh, after expansion and after that you try to compare it up. so y equals to c plus mx okay so a lot of students are usually they will ask uh, how i know that which one is y axis and which one is x axis so actually um the data given for you to sketch the graph one will be the x and y so that means the p is given right its population is given therefore it should be the uh, y axis and then t is also given right in the question so x should be the t x axis should be the t and therefore m is log b and then c is log a so the c and m we will cover it later okay so now we focus on y axis so y axis should be log p x axis should be the t okay so now you need to create a table so the t very straightforward you don't need to do anything you just need to list it up from zero until 70. because they said x axis is t right so this is an x axis okay then how about for y axis so y axis they want you to take the value of long p so now you take long and then you look at this one long 3.9 okay press calculator straight away on 3.9 then you just write out the answer 1.36 then for the second value on 5.3 press calculator you should get 1.67 so for my uh, example here i leave everything in three significant figure okay so you don't need to list out two details uh, because uh, you can just roughly sketch a graph you can't sketch a graph into a very accurate answer right now. So we just roughly sketch it. So I leave everything in three significant figure. Okay, so once I have my value already, what I need to do now is I will try to sketch the graph. 
Okay, so I need to make it smaller so that you don't really know how am I going to sketch it. Uh. Okay, so my value of t is from zero until seventy. So what I can what I can do now is like this. Okay, so and then my y at this uh, is long p, right? The highest value is three point four five. Therefore, it's quite easy for me to sketch this one. Okay, so let us start. Okay, so maybe I will put my x at this like this. Okay, so let's say this is 0, this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Okay, so this is t. And then for my y axis, it should be long p. Okay, so for long p, maybe I will label this as 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so now what you can do now is you try to uh, plot the value like that you have in the table. So 0 is 1.36, so you are going to draw 1.36, then 1.67, 1.97, 2.26, and then 2.56, and everything. Alright, so I just roughly draw it, okay, so you can plot it on your own graph by using the graph paper, 3.45. Okay, so once you uh, finish plotting the graph already, okay, find the best fit of linear line okay, for all the data here. Best fit of the line. Alright, so if you want to draw the best fit of line, um, everyone will have different answer. Because maybe to you, when you feel that this is the best line, and then maybe for other people, they will find hey, this is the best fit, another best, best fit of line. So all the lines will be slightly different. Okay, so no matter how, you just try to sketch the best fit of line for your points. Okay, so once you are done with the best fit of line, then what you need to do now is you have to try to get the value for A and B from the graph. Okay, so what is the value for A and B? So you go back to the steps that we write on top. Okay, so just now we are saying that, okay, long A is equal to C. C is Y-intercept. Okay, so now, please look at the Y-intercept of your graph. Alright, so for mine one is 1.36, ah, but maybe for yours one is not 1.36. It depends on where your line, the linear line cut through your Y axis. Okay, so for my one, I'm taking 1.36 because my line cut through the 1.36. Understand what I said? Okay, so your answer might not be the same as my one, but no matter how, you just follow what you have in your graph. Okay, so after you this you know the y-intercept already, so you let log a equals to y-intercept, which is 1.36 for my case, uh -huh, for my example. So A, to get the value of A, it will be equal to E power 1.36. So the A will be equal to 3.86. Alright, and after that, I want to get the value for B. Because my original equation got A and B that I don't know, right? So I need to find the value for B. So how can I get the value for B? So again, if you look at it, they are comparing the gradient with log b. Okay, so now you need to calculate the gradient from the graph. So you can take any two points on the graph that your, your graph pass through. Fun. Any point will do. Maybe you can use this one if you want, or maybe you can use this one if you want. Then you try to figure out what is the gradient. All right, so I hope that you remember how to find the gradient. Because when you're having these two graphs here, these two points here, Okay, so you assume that this is x2, y2, then this one is x1, y1. So to find the gradient, you need to take y2 minus y1, y2 minus y1 is this one. Okay, divided by x2 minus x1. Alright, you can use any two points on the line to find out the gradient. Okay, so again, as well, I said, because our line are different, therefore the value of gradient will be a bit different also. Right? It will not be the, exactly the same one. Alright, okay, so for my gradient, 
for the two points that I'm using uh, is this one. So 3.4 minus 1.2535 divided by, uh, sorry, I'm using 70 minus 0. Okay, and after that, I get the gradient value, which is 41 over 1,400. Let's say I get this one. Okay, so after I try to get my gradient, how to get this gradient, I'm using any two points on the graph, and then I apply it in the gradient formula. And then I got this one, 41 over 1,400. So gradient in my comparison just now, gradient is what? Gradient is log B. Therefore, you will let log B equals to your gradient. All right, then the B will be E power 41 over 1,400. And from here, you will get the value of B also, which is 1.03. Okay, so once you get the value for A and B, then you can write out the population equation according to the data that you have. So the population equation should be 3.86. And then B is 1.03 power T. Okay, so your answer should be more or less like this. Of course, it will, it will not be exactly the same. Okay, please take note on that. It will not be exactly the same. But generally, this is the step how we use the data to estimate the original uh, equation, original curve equation. But to get the original curve equation, right, you need to actually compare it with y equals to mx plus c so that you can get the value from the gradient and also from the y-intercept. All right, so this is what we have for number 10. Okay, so I think you might need some time to sketch the graph and whatsoever and try to complete this example, right? Okay, then for the next example also, I will show you roughly how to do it, and then you need to do it yourself, right? Okay, so let's have a look for example 11. So for example 11, again, they tell you, they give you some data, some data here, and then if you look at the equation, that it is E equals to A plus Wn, W power N. So estimate the parameter A and N. So A and N, you don't know, you want to estimate them, uh, to estimate the mathematical model. All right, so now, this is the original equation. Okay, so before I start sketching my graph, what I need to do now is I need to convert it first into the linear equation. So E equals to A W power N. So by taking ln both sides, okay, and expand it. You have long A plus N long W. And then you want to compare it with Y equals to MX plus C. Okay, so as what I told you, Y axis should be the value given in the data. So the value given is E, right? E is given, the energy expand is given. Therefore, Y axis should be long E. And after that, what is given, what else is given? W, W is weight. So that means on X, the X axis should be long W. So M is N, and also long A is C. All right. Okay, so now you have to complete the table. So for the table, you will have X axis, you will have Y axis. So what is the X axis value? You should get it from long W. And also for y axis, you should get log e. Okay, so for w, so as an example, for the first w is 2, right? So you take log 2. So log 2 will be equal to 0 0.693 and so on. Okay, then this is 4.25, 6.4, and also 8.29. And then for log e, you have 4.06. 3.50, 3.00, and also 2.48.
Okay, so you just take loan from all the data given in the table above. Alright, so you know that your x-axis should be ln w and also your y-axis should be ln e. Okay, so what are you going to do next is you again sketch the graph. Okay, so I'm not going to show you in detail anymore. Huh? Alright, so you label your x and y axis. So this is ln w, this is ln e, and then you try to plot the four points here. Okay, so this one is slightly harder than the previous one because the previous one, all the points are, are almost in linear already. But for this equation, uh, for this uh, set of data, um, a lot of students will have different best fit of line. Uh, but it doesn't matter, right? As long as you feel that that's the best fit of line, linear form line, then you just draw it. It's okay. No need to worry about it, okay? And after that, the same thing happened. Uh, just now, what is the equation here? So the equation is... If you compare to get A, you have to compare it with Y intercept. Okay, so you see what is the Y intercept from your graph, best fit of line. Then you compare log A equals to your Y intercept. Then you get a value of A. And after that, you compare M with N. Or N with M, that means gradient with the N. So you need to find the gradient first. So what is the gradient? You can find out from your graph. And after that, what is the value of n? Okay, all right. So everyone will have different linear line. Therefore, everyone will have different answers. Okay, so no need to too worry about it. And therefore, if your graph and everything draw correctly, all right, there's no mistake or whatsoever, then my answer is this. Okay, this is my answer. That means it equals to 71.5 and the n is negative 0 0.195. But of course, will your answer exactly the same as my one? No, because every one of us will have different best fit of line. This line is different. Okay, that means your y intercept, your gradient will be a bit different and end up the final answer will be also different. Okay? So no matter how, for this example 11, I just want you to have a try and make sure that you understand the process. For the answer here, if your answer is different than my one, it's okay. No need to worry about it. All right? But, but you just need to make sure that you know the whole process here, how to sketch your graph, how to estimate the value for A, and also how to estimate and compare the value of N. That's the most important thing. Alright, so once you get your answer already, and if you realize that hey, your answer is very far away from what I have here, you can uh, ask me to verify and check your graph if let's say you are not so clear. Alright, okay, so this is the answer for your reference. Uh, okay, of course, if let's say your answer is different, then it's okay. Uh, but if let's say you really want me to check, I can check for you. Uh, you need to take the graph that you draw for me, and I can already check for you and see is there any mistake or not. Alright. Okay, then, uh, so a lot of students will have a question here. If uh, in the exam, uh, every one of us are drawing a different graph, how can you get the correct answer here? Fair enough, because all the answers will be different, right? How are they going to mark? So generally in exam, usually uh, they won't give, they won't ask you to draw the graph, uh, but in my opinion, when you draw the graph, uh, at least you roughly know what's the process. So that's why I include the graph sample here, okay? So in exam, usually they will give you some certain value and some very detailed values. Huh? Then from the value, you should always use it and estimate the answer. Or maybe in exam also, they will surely give you a graph. Instead of asking you to draw the graph, they will surely give you a graph. Okay, then only you estimate the value from the graph that they give you. All right, okay, so for this video, I'm just going to ex uh, discuss example 10 and 11 here mainly to let you know how to sketch a graph from a set of data given and after that how you estimate the value that you need from the original equation. All right, then for the next video and uh, next video only we are going to discuss uh, how are we going to solve the question if the graph is given. Okay, 
and sometimes the graph will not be given but they give the extra information and then from that you can also solve and estimate the value from the original equation all right so we discuss example 12 and 13 in the next video so make sure that you complete this graph first okay so that's all for this video see you again in the next one